I'm Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, you can listen to Steve every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Steve also has a great newsletter on Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get this newsletter, folks. Just come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go into featured content. You'll see you just hit subscribe. You can get the letter for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. You get it for a year for $1,195, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. So check it out. Get what you like out there. If you like it, great. You'll get charged the next month. If you don't like it, you get your money back. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, it's hot outside. It's hot it's outside. Hot, it there's no doubt. Uh, yeah, and, and it's, it's cold hot. in the market. <laughs> uh, uh, well, like you said, volatility is a uh, trader's uh, friend out it here. Is. So. Uh, you know, so I thought we would do kind of like we have here in the past because because it, it's really pertinent is just begin by taking a look at our annual seasonal cycle charts. And the first thing that I would point out to folks that are looking at this is the typical pattern. So this is over the last 86 years. The okay. typical pattern is that the Dow forms an initial high in the first few weeks of May. Turns out that day is around May 19th. Then we see a movement down typically into June, right around June 25th. Then one last rally to set that summer high that typically comes uh, July 21st, which is today's 19th, so would be on Wednesday. But notice here the patterns, the highs are typically very similar. And so with the exception of the exact dates marking highs and lows, so here's, a, in essence, an active chart of the Dow. Uh, we actually had the high come in on May 10th. In fact, I think we missed it on Thursday by about one point. Uh, and, and not that it needed to, but that's your, that was a resistance level out here. And so uh, what I would think at this stage, oh, I, I, I should, you should be able to see the charts. We can see them. They're okay, fine. good. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. So I'd, I'd really have to say that the cycle pattern is in play because we had that initial, remember it was May 19th, well, it came in at May 10th. June 25th is typically a bottom, was June 18th. May 21st, or uh, yeah, May 21st is typically the, on average, the high, it was May 19th at this stage out here. So certainly the seasonal cycle pattern is in play. And that suggests folks, again, that the markets could move lower or should move lower into about the middle of October. So for those folks that uh, feel like they've uh, missed the uh, short side of this, that that is not the case, uh, If especially that is not the case if we are in our unfavorable seasonal cycle out here uh, that takes us down into the October time frame. So that's the first thing. And if we're going to see a move lower, and that's really important. Then what we do, this is where we make our money, so to speak. Uh, this is where folks listen to us and try to understand where our key levels of support. Inside the Dow Equity Future contract, that level is 33,731. Now, 33,731, folks, that is the bottom of a TAS market profile. Okay. And here we've got a chart that takes us back, Tom, into the 2017 timeframes. We can see that when price closes below the bottom of this weekly, of, of this weekly profile, uh, that can lead to much, much lower price. And the much, much lower price right now, if, in fact, we see a close, and this close, folks, you'd really be looking at not what's going on today or Tuesday or Wednesday. It's really the close on Friday. So a close time on Friday below 33,731 would actually set up a move down to the top of its monthly profile, and that's at 31,453. So that's a pretty good ways to the downside. So we definitely want to keep uh, as one of the levels that we're watching 31,453. There's another key level of support. And it's the breakout area. And the breakout level uh, that I use are, are formed by these TD9 counts. It's a Tom DeMarc system out here. And the low of that pattern, which on the Dow, uh, which on the Dow Equity Future contract, is 33,627. I believe we've hit that or maybe just uh, just below that or maybe a point above that uh, during the day today. So on a daily basis, this is a real key level to watch because typically when you close below one TD9 breakout level, you then move to the next one. But as we speak right now, and this is really important for everybody to understand, that first level has been tested. In fact, this would typically be the point in time at 33,627 where people would buy the dip because this is the breakout area. So very important level to watch. And, and from a breakout perspective, if 33,627 fails, then on the Dow weekly chart, 
our level becomes 33,157 to look at. So let me summarize this for everybody, and everybody can write this down in their pad of paper. And these are the levels that will be key. Now, this is the Dow Equity Future contract. Okay. The first level to be watching is going to be 33,731, because closes below these areas, specifically for their time frames, then bring about the next areas of target. So we're really going to be looking at this on Friday, but we'll pay attention to it certainly today and tomorrow and so forth. So close below that, Tom, brings us to then 33,627. That was that daily TD9 breakout level. A close below that brings us into 33,157. That becomes the weekly TD9 breakout level. And below that, 31,453. And all of these are absolutely in play here over time, especially if, in fact, that seasonal cycle has kicked in. Now, I recognize that not everybody tracks the Dow Equity Future contract. So I've got a few things here for the cash indice. In the cash indice, and, and folks, in my opinion, the Equity Future contract for the work that I do is better than just taking a look at the ETFs or the cash indices. And the reason is because we have more discovery, more time, because it's traded about 24 hours a day. But still, I can use these same tools, Tom, on an index or a stock. Or, uh, or an ETF. In this case here, that level is 33,869. So if price is able to close below 33,869, that is going to suggest, and this is a daily time frame, that is going to suggest lower price. Now, the lower price level, if I take a look at the cash indice, Tom, takes us all the way down to 30,014. That is where uh, the Dow broke out. So this is the longer term picture. This is where if the uh, Dow, if we have entered that unfavorable seasonal cycle between July and October, that really becomes a longer term target. There's even another one below that at 28,902. So all that being said. So, yeah, so one of that, that last one they gave, that's six months ago. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah that, right. That's on the, that's the weekly breakout. Level. Right. You know, and, and so and so if you break one, you start, you know, break on the daily, then you start taking a look at where are we at on the weekly time frame. So this is kind of like the fly in the financial ointment. So everything is pointing to we're in the unfavorable seasonal cycle and we should move lower. But I want everybody to understand this as well. And that is that since the March 2020 low, the Dow has had seven what I refer to as two week knee-jerk reaction lows. And on this chart here, the ones and the twos, all the digits out here, and we're really looking at the red ones, they represent where the close of the current week is below the close of the prior week. Okay. And so I've got all these blue arrows pointed to those two levels. There's only been one exception to the two-week knee-jerk reaction low, and that was a four-week time period back here in the August-September time frame. So this clearly looks like we may be in week number two, and 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 so this would be this is the strongest element that I would could find for the bull case out there. Do I think we're here? You know, Tom, price a time will tell. You know, whether we're here or not. Sure. Now, this is really important. I want folks to understand this is that we should see a bounce or a short term bottom form, perhaps even tonight. And one of the reasons, because this advanced decline oscillator is in the extreme oversold condition out here. That and we have a spot volatility index that right now is a one day rate of change well above 10 percent out there. All this stuff included in the newsletter. So uh that's what, I, that's what I see when we take a look at the charts right now. And folks, very easy to get his newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. Go into featured content. You're going to see mastering probability right there. Steve, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. You Thank too. Thank you. Bye -bye now.